Namaste. Let's go live on Saturday morning just after 6 a.m. Saturday the 25th of January. And I'm down walking at the beach rather than riding the bicycle because um, I'm not quite sure if I should risk that for my lower back injury at the moment. So I've decided uh, to do a uh, just a probably a brief live stream here. But a very, very, very important one. I want to talk about my magical journey with um, humours endorphins. And uh, I've got to say, it's quite, uh, it's a little bit, um, not glary, but there's a lot of salt spraying that down the beach here this morning. Anyway, um, see if I can uh, put up with walking and holding this at the same time. Right, so I was watching a YouTube video last week and it was really great. It, it, it was a guy talking about his experience with humour and the power of humour and how from a very young age he was able to tap into humour and, and it, rela and it um, had a reaction to those people around him. And uh, he of course ended up becoming, well, not necessarily of course, but he became a writer, a comedy writer. Wow, you can probably hear that aeroplane. And so, um, I, I, immediately, I'm watching this YouTube video, immediately I'm thinking, wow, I had a very similar experience when I was young, discovering the power of humour in the way that it helped break the ice, basically, for those people that I was communicating with, uh, those people I was associating with at school, uh, teachers and, um, and students. And I had this very similar experience. There were two things when I was young that I discovered Back, way back in primary school, you know, this is way before the invention of the dinosaur, uh, way before the invention of electricity and the, and the uh, you know, still back in the days of the dinosaur, you know. So, um, what I discovered that in, in times of conflict, and when there was tension between people, uh, when I was put in a situation where uh, somebody, another student was not particularly happy with me for some reason, um, but I had this natural ability to calm down the person. And I would do it, one of the techniques I would use is humour. Humour would be one of, the, um, one of the things that I could use to help calm someone down and, and bring them around to my, to my side, basically. So I also, um, also used very early versions of negotiating skills that I had and an ability to stay calm in a hostile situation. So things that I think a lot of this came through my uh, observations of the way that my father was able to communicate with people and, and um, so I think I picked a lot of that up from him. But humour has become a very powerful tool that I've used over the years and being the son of an Irishman I've been cursed with the ability to <laughs> come up with some very quick quips and I appreciate I always love it when I meet someone that can do the same thing I just love it I just I'm talking to somebody and they'll just fire back with with a one-liner as a response to something I've said and I just go brilliant brilliant it's just an it's just a talent that <laughs> that I appreciate so much. It's just like, and some of the people that I relate to the most are those that have this ability, those that have this talent. Uh, I work with someone that has this talent. He, he reminds me so much of myself because he can just go bang with a response and you just go, wow, that is, that is fantastic. <laughs> so there is a, an art form to effective humour um, as opposed to humour that is not effective I guess. There's a condescending type of humour which has become more prevalent as the decades have gone by and I've noticed this um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a, it comes from a nasty place I guess you could say and it's not the sort of humour that interests me at all. It's, it's a put down type of humour, it's you know having a go at somebody uh, but, try, but masking it with humour. And that's not what humour is about. Humour is about releasing endorphins, about 
Uh, creating a situation that helps us to feel good, both for the person that's um, putting the humour out there and also for the person that's receiving it. So it's a, it's a giving uh, situation that, that is um, giving to someone and they are receiving this gift of endorphins. What a beautiful gift to give someone, eh? a gift of endorphins. <laughs> and so there is a fine line between what works and what doesn't work. Uh, I've never been a fan of practical jokes. They're just nasty most of the time and come from the wrong, they come from the wrong sort of um, intention, the intention to belittle someone, which is, is just completely unacceptable. So, you know, I'm, I'm only interested in humour that is genuine, that's coming from a place of wanting the person to laugh, wanting the person to feel good about themselves, to give them a few moments of endorph endorphinic joy. There, I, don't, I just invented that, that uh, use of the word endorphins. And endorphins is that natural high that we get when, we, um, when our brain releases these endorphins, these chemicals. And uh, it's something that for me in my, in my journey has been a constant that has been there for me. And you know, you get to those points where you're, you're having those really challenging times in your life. And oh, good morning, Robert. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope the camera is not too jerky. It's a little bit hard to walk and hold it at the same time. But you know, you get to those points in your life where you're having a bit of a um, a, a rough a rough trot and you know those are the times when uh, I've been known to put on a romantic comedy combining you know the two loves of mine have been um, comedy and romance so by, by being able to combine those two um, you know I, I come out of the end of a movie like that feeling feeling really you know um, uh, just feeling like a different person you know and, and my choice you know would be in a situation like that where it's like a bit of a struggle of that is to tap into a movie like that it's because it leaves us feeling better about ourselves and the world rather than tapping into something like a, a dark sort of a movie you know something with violence and aggressiveness and and you know I was listening to a TEDx talk yesterday from um, uh, a lady who's a TEDx talk about highly sensitive people, which I posted on my timeline, and I could definitely relate to what she was saying about, um, you know, the the um, the different characteristics of the, of a HSP and how things like aggressive movies and that are just um, too overwhelming for somebody with HSP and I'm a, you know I'm, I consider myself a highly sensitive person and noticed long ago when I was quite young that I could not handle uh, aggressive violent movies and I couldn't understand the logic of anyone that would put their mind into that situation when you have the choice you have the ability to have um, to tap into a humorous situation so humor is something that if it's done from a good intention, the intention to give a gift of helping somebody else feel better about themselves, if it's done from that intention, then I, I think it's a beautiful thing. And it's, um, it has amazing power, releases endorphins, helps us feel a little bit better about ourselves, can be used in many different situations, can be done with a, you know, just a single line. I keep in, over the years I've, built up like a library of different um, one-liner, quick one-liner comebacks to things that people will say, you know. One of the ones that I use from time to time is somebody will say, oh, I, I've, I've missed you. And I'll go, well, you'll need to aim better next time. You know, and it's just half a dozen words. And it's, the person stops, thinks about it, and they go, ah, yeah, you know, and has a bit of a chuckle about it. And it's just changed the intent of the conversation. It's made it so that, you know, we're on the same page. It's made it so that we feel a little bit better about ourselves. And so what I'm recommending, without trying to keep this live stream going too long, because it's hard to hold this camera up, 
and I don't want to be holding my arm up and, you know, and affecting my lower back too much. So what I recommend is that we tap into humour, humorous movies, good humour, not the, you know, uh, not the humour that you get in uh, stand-up routines where there's a lot of swearing and darkness and that to it. You know, I'm talking good, healthy, well-intentioned humour. Tap into it, let the endorphins flow. Very handy for when, for when we're feeling down on ourselves. Um, much better than tapping into a, you know, listening to a lot of sad songs or something like that. And, uh, you know, look for the humour in ourselves and the humour in others and appreciate the gift that it is and the way that some people can deliver it so effortlessly. And you'll find over a period of time that you're actually tapping into it yourself and it's coming up more and more naturally from you. And um, you are then sharing it with others and, and brightening their day. So I hope that uh, my journey with humour has encouraged you to... Um, to have a really wonderful journey with it as well. So live vegan and save lives. I'll speak to you soon. Ahimsa.